What's going on YouTube? This your boy Jiggy J with Real to Real Visuals, and today I'll be telling you how I get clients for wedding videos, and I'll also be sharing my process of how I shoot wedding videos and how I edit them. clientele uh, my biggest thing is marketing on social media man uh, social media is the biggest marketing platform out there and it's also free I take advantage of that big time Instagram I try to post at least once a day Facebook I try to keep it consistent on Facebook as well social media help allow people to be able to see my work uh, see what I'm capable of doing see my quality see um, how wedding videos actually look Another thing is word of mouth. Um, I have a lot of friends and family that actually pass out my cards for me or tell people about me, send them to my social media. Even with uh, doing weddings, I get a lot of people who refer me from a wedding that they've been to and they seen me do already. The key to it is actually getting your first wedding under your belt, man. So uh, I would say like for your first wedding, maybe don't charge or charge a really low price um, just, to be, just to get your name out there. Once you get your first wedding under your belt, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start picking up from there. You're going to get going. You're also able to see what you're capable of actually doing. You pick out your weaknesses and your strengths and you uh, focus on those and uh, take it into your next video and make sure you uh, execute properly on those to make your video way better than your last one. My whole process of when I go to shoot wedding videos, before I leave home, I definitely make sure I have all my equipment. I make a checklist to make sure I have my camera, my lights, my gimbal my batteries, my battery chargers, make a list of everything that I will need and things that I might need, I bring it just in case. Sometimes, like the day before maybe, or a few days before, I also go scope out the venue to see what I'm working with, find out the location, find out how long it takes to get from my house to the venue so I know how much time I have so I won't be late. And when I first get to a wedding, I make contact with the bride and I make contact with the groom to make sure they know I'm there. Most of the time, because it takes the bride a lot longer to get ready than the groom side. I go and start recording for the bride, catch her getting the makeup done, getting dressed, getting ready, talking with her friends, dancing, having fun right before the wedding. And I'll go over to the groom side and you know chat it up with them, start catching them, get ready. Some solo footage of the groom getting dressed, putting on his jewelry, um, putting on his shoes, stuff like that. And then I actually go into the venue and start capturing every little detail of the decorations. I get flowers, bouquets, wedding rings, shoes, jewelry, all kind of accessories, whatever they have that's gonna make the video pop. I try to record whether I'm gonna use it or not. I know I have it if I do need to use it. During the ceremony, I make sure I get the close-ups, the distance shots. Make sure you capture the vows, whether you use it in the video or not. As far as the audio part, make sure you capture it just to give to the uh, the groom and the bride to have just in case. That's a big part of the wedding is the vows and you don't want to miss that, man. Just make sure you capture a lot of footage, man, throughout the whole ceremony, throughout the whole reception. Uh, if you're doing a reception, get as much footage as possible. You can never have too much footage, man. The more the better, you have a lot more to play with. Even though you may not use all of it when you go to edit, you have everything. With my editing process of a wedding video, I usually get the bride and the groom to send me a couple of songs that they may want to use for the video or sometimes I'll pick my own songs that I want to use if I feel like it fit better with the video. Well while I'm recording at the wedding, first off I make sure everything is recorded at 60 frames per second because about 95% of my wedding videos are slow motion so that 60 frames per second is going to make the slow motion really smooth for me. And slow motion also helps bring out the emotion in the video. This is very well needed when you do a wedding video. I think slow motion might be the most important thing. <laughs> I normally pick the first song that I want to use and work on the video towards that song. Make the video flow with the song, match the lyrics as much as I can. I really, really beat up a wedding video with slow motion. It just makes the video like 10 times better than if you was to play it at normal speed. It's almost like doing a music video. Make the video to the beat. The only difference is it's like you're making the video with just straight beat. Make sure you get all the special moments in the video, the crying, walking down the aisles, first dance, mother and son dance, daddy and daughter dance. The key to doing a wedding video is try to make the bride cry all over again. Make her cry all over again and you, you succeed with your wedding video. It's, it's really not much to it, man. You just gotta get out there and do it, man. A wedding video is a lot harder to practice because it's not something that you could just um, reshoot if you mess up. Uh, you It's a one take and go. 
one take and go. If you mess up, find a way to use that mess up to your advantage. That's about it, man. That's all I have. Please feel free to check out some of my most recent wedding videos that I've done uh, to help you kind of give you an idea of how wedding videos are supposed to go. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I will be dropping more videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media, Real to Real Visuals on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll catch you guys in my next video.